Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Lightest Linux Distros. Today we are going to be talking about Slacks. Now Slacks is different from Tiny Core in that Tiny Core only took about 20 to 30 megabytes of our CD-ROM, whereas Slacks takes about 450 to 500 megabytes. So keep in mind that the computational requirements for running Slacks as an operating system are significantly higher than for running Tiny Core. Uh, Tiny Core is about the lightest and the smallest Linux distribution that we're going to be looking at in this series. So from now on, if you're going to try these operating systems, I recommend that you have a computer with at least 500 megs of RAM. Um, probably something from the early to mid 2000s at the oldest if you want to be able to run all of these. The particular computer that I have here doesn't have a hard drive currently attached and I have this CD-ROM reader hooked up here uh, which is acting like a hard drive and for operating systems that are smaller like slacks that only take up a few hundred megabytes uh, you can actually use the CD drive as your only um, sort of hard drive substitute. Uh, but do keep in mind that with these larger Linux systems such as Slacks, uh, the computer is going to have to read more from the CD-ROM than from just the memory as it would on Tiny Core. Because with Tiny Core, the entire operating system can fit into that 500 megabytes of RAM. But with Slacks, there are going to be some instances uh, where the operating system is going to have to access the CD-ROM, uh, particularly if you're going to be adding applications and programs and saving your progress at the end of each session. So after you've burned the operating system onto your storage disk, uh, I recommend having a CD that is uh, 700 megabytes or above just so that you can be sure that you have enough space. You're going to want to go ahead and start your computer, which I'm going to do now. You can see that we are in the BIOS now, and it's telling us that we haven't inserted the CD yet, so that's what we're going to do now. And now that we have the disk inserted, I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer again. And now you should be able to hear the DVD drive spinning up as we boot from CD-ROM. It is searching the boot record now. It seems to be having some trouble here. So that's not, that's not terribly good. Uh, let's go ahead and take out the disk, put it back in, and see if we can get it to boot. Alright, so we're going to restart and try again here. Back up on the screen. And we're searching for a boot record again here. Huh. Keep having this failure, which is not not good. That's odd because right before I did this video I made sure that it booted fine and everything worked great and I got in and it worked so let's do some troubleshooting here and see if we can figure this out. You know something that I have to deal with all the time working with older computers like this one is, is just that as computers get older and new software comes out things get unstable and things might not have necessarily been made to run on old computers like this so you just got to deal with all sorts of issues like this. So the first thing that I'm going to do to troubleshoot is make sure that there's no scratches or smudges on my disk which I'll just do a quick wipe off on my shirt here but I don't think that looks to be a problem. I'm going to put the disk back in and go ahead and try another restart now. Oh, that's not good. 
the whole thing has just gone and shut off. We've got it back on. And it is searching again for a boot record. Oh, and we're in. Yeah, so there must have been just a little smudge on the disc or a piece of dust. That's why people generally don't like to use CDs anymore. Is that they're very finicky and easy to scratch. You can hear that CD-ROM drive really going fast now. So Slax is a much more advanced operating system than TinyCore was, which we looked at in episode one. So it's very minimalistic, as you can see. There's only one sort of start menu button down here. And from this, you pull up an apps page. And like I said in the last video, uh, if you're familiar with Mac OS, a lot of Linux GUIs are going to be similar to Mac OS. So this particular element of clicking on that and having this app panel launch up kind of reminds me of Launchpad on Mac. So unlike TinyCore, we have a web browser that comes pre-installed. And one of the things that I've noticed with dealing with the processor that I'm running on this old computer is that it doesn't have SSE2 support. So I was planning on doing my next video on actually a, a different operating system, but I found out that the operating system would not even boot because of a lack of SSE2 support on my processor. So be sure that the computer you have uh, can support everything that you need before you burn it to a disk and save yourself some trouble. So if you have a newer computer, I'm sure Chromium will work fine. Uh, like TinyCore, we also have a text editor here. This text editor isn't even more functional than TinyCore's though. It's the same situation of, I suppose you could use it as a word processor in a pinch, but I would not recommend it. If you're dying to use Linux and you need a word processor, you really should be using uh, LibreOffice or however you pronounce it. Uh, we also have a calculator here. And you'll notice that every time I click on something, the CD-ROM drive spins up because it's actually having to access it like a hard drive. Hold on, let me put my microphone by it so you can hear what it sounds like when I click on something. So it is possible that you're going to have to deal with some noise like that when you first open an application upon booting because of a lack of memory. Now keep in mind that if your computer has more memory than mine, if you're running a gigabyte of memory or something, you're probably going to be able to have everything uh, just run right out of the memory of the computer. So you're not going to have that problem. But if you're dealing with an older computer like I am, you are going to run into little inconveniences like that. And if you have something against hard drive noise or CD-ROM noise, you're really not going to like this setup. So we also have a terminal here. Like I said I don't, in the last video, I don't think I really have to explain what a terminal is if you're making your own boot disks for Linux distros. And we also have this function called NetManager. Essentially just helps you establish a wired or wireless connection. So nothing fancy here. Uh, but with having the, an access to a built-in web browser uh, and a modern computer, Slax is really going to give you a lot more versatility than TinyCore will. TinyCore is meant for those super, super, super old computers that can't even run stuff like Slax. But Slax is good for those middle ground computers. Maybe it's five or ten years old and it's just running slow. You don't want to pay for an SSD to replace the old hard drive, so you just put a much lighter operating system on it. For a lot of people, this is a completely viable option, and Slax is a particularly light one that I would strongly recommend for anyone who just wants to breathe a little bit of life into their old computer. Anyways, this has been episode two of Lightest Linux Distros here. If you've liked this video, please leave a like. 
And if you'd like to see more videos like this, specifically more videos in this series, feel free to go ahead and subscribe. We will be covering several more Linux distros in this series and how to make your old computer run faster.